Hello friends, this video on reproduction in animals part 16 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now we have understood the entire process of reproduction in case of human beings. So human beings are those type of animals which directly give birth to their young ones. Like a mother gives birth to a small human baby, right? She does, does not lay eggs. Correct. But there are animals which do not give birth to their young ones directly. Instead, they lay eggs. So depending upon how new organisms are born, there are two types of animals, viviparous and oviparous. So let us see what are they. So what are viviparous animals? These are those animals which give birth to their young ones directly. So they do not, I mean, even though the egg cells are formed inside, but when they give birth, they directly give birth to young ones. So the fertilization of the egg and the development of the fertilized egg into an embryo and then the embryo into fetus, all those development take place inside the mother's body. So when she gives birth, she gives birth to a young organism. So that is viviparous. So examples of viviparous animals are humans, cows, dogs, cats. They are all examples of viviparous animals. Whereas oviparous animals are those which lay eggs which later develop into young ones. That means the development part doesn't take place inside the mother's body. It takes place outside. So in oviparous what happens is eggs are formed and they are released outside. And then from those eggs you, new organisms or young organisms are formed. So this formation takes place outside the mother's body. Examples of such animals are fishes, amphibians like frogs, reptiles, hens. These are all examples of oviparous. You would have often heard that a hen laying eggs. So these are the oviparous animals. So let us see when are the eggs released by oviparous animals because viviparous animals we have fairly understood as we have discussed in detail about human beings. But in case of oviparous animals since they are going to lay eggs so at what time will they release their eggs? So in case of oviparous animals, what happens is when fertilization takes place. So here also the same thing will happen. Fertilization would mean the fusion between the male gamete and the female gamete. So let us suppose fertilization has taken place. So as a result of fertilization, zygote will be formed, which will be a single cell. Now there will be multiple protective layers which will be formed over a period of time. Like the zygote will keep on developing at the same time there will be some additional layers which will be formed outside the zygote for protection. As a result a hard shell will be formed because of those protective layers which are being formed. Once the hard shell is formed, then the eggs are laid. So the eggs which are actually laid by oviparous animals, they look somewhat like this. So outside you can see a very hard shell. So these shell is nothing but they are the protective layers which are present, which are protecting the developing zygote inside. Now, once the eggs are laid by the animal for example we take the example of hen now it is very easy for you to visualize the hen's egg because many of you would have seen it it is also available in the shops because it is consumed by human beings so the even after the eggs are laid they are given sufficient warmth by the animal so the bird will actually sit over uh, her eggs so that it can provide sufficient warmth so that the chick can come out, it can break the shell and it can come out because the development is happening inside. So the hard shell which we see outside is just a protective layer but inside the development of the zygote is continuously taking place. Now once a small chick is formed, it will just break the uh, outer shell and it will come out and that is how a new the new organisms are formed or the young ones then later develop. So in this case what happened? The eggs were formed inside the body of the hen but then the eggs were laid outside. Now in the outer environment or in the external environment the development of the eggs into the chick state took place. So it happened outside. So these kind of animals are called oviparous animals. 
So the entire development takes place inside the egg. When it develops fully, it bursts the shell and comes out. So this is how the concept of oviparous animals are. So now a question is, all the young ones of different organisms, do they look exactly similar to their parents? Like I was telling you, right? For example, in human beings, the human babies look like human beings. But is it necessary that for all animals, the young ones will look similar to their parents? Not really. I'll give you some examples of animals where the young ones look very different. For example, frog. So some animals, young ones, look very different from the adult and we, you, if you look at their life cycle you will see that it passes through so many different stages where the animal looks completely different it doesn't even look that okay it is going to be a frog so now we will talk about the life cycle of a frog and also a silkworm a silkworm is a worm but in its adult stages you see it as a moth and both of them look so different, but it is the same organism. Just that during different phases of their life, they look completely different from each other. So these are two such examples of animals where throughout their life cycle, they look very different in one phase from another. So let us look at the life cycle of a frog. So you see these are the eggs which are being laid by an adult frog. These eggs will gradually develop to form tadpoles. So just look at this tadpole. Does it look like a frog? Not at all. It looks so different. But it is, it is actually a tiny frog, the initial stages of a frog. So this tadpole will gradually develop its legs and it will look a little bigger, a little grown up tadpole. Finally, it will turn into a frog. So see, just look at the drastic change which happened here. So the tadpole turned into a frog, small frog and this small frog will later become an adult frog. Again, this frog will lay eggs and from this eggs, again, a tadpole will be formed. So if you compare a tadpole with a frog, both of them look so different, but actually tadpole is a young frog in a way so they look quite different similarly if you look at the life cycle of a silkworm in silkworm also their eggs are laid on the leaves of the trees so these are the eggs from this a silkworm develops it looks like a normal worm which crawls on the ground this then later forms a structure called a cocoon and inside this cocoon the silkworm develops into a moth. You see the silkworm keeps on developing in a different way and finally it turns out to be a moth. So now just look at the silkworm and look at this moth. So basically this is the adult form and this is the young form and both of them are completely different. It is a worm and it looks like a fly. So, but they are the same organism. So it is something like a small human baby looks like this and when he grows and as an adult, he looks like this. So completely contradicting, but still they are the same organism. But in case of animals like human beings or cats, dogs, so throughout the life cycle, they look the same way. So these were two examples where we see drastic changes throughout the life cycle. And this kind of development is called metamorphosis. So metamorphosis is a term which tells us the drastic changes in the life cycle of an animal where the animal looks very different at different stages of its life. But it is, that doesn't mean that organisms of all animals look different from adults. Look at human beings, look at elephants, giraffes. So here you can see that their young ones look similar to their adults. It is just that in case of human beings also the height increases, the weight increases and as you grow old your hair turns white. So those changes will be there but overall the appearance will remain the similar. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.